So if you have spots, I have the answers for you. My name is Dr. Anthony Yoon and I'm known as America's Holistic Plastic Surgeon. And on this video, I'm gonna talk with you about how you can get rid of your age spots, sunspots, liver spots, all of that holistically. So first let's talk about what exactly these spots are. Well, the term age spot, sunspot, liver spot, these are all the same names for, or different names for the same thing. It's unwanted pigmentation. Now, when your skin uh, basically gets damaged by ultraviolet radiation, by basically the rays of the sun, it can deposit pigment in ways that you may not want. And that pigment can deposit itself basically as these spots. Now, it's interesting because there's so many people that I see who are in their uh, 40s and 50s and 60s who have a ton of spots and they tell me, Dr. Yoon, I haven't really been exposed to the sun, so I don't know where these spots are coming from. And I do believe that you can get spots that show up later on uh, after you've had a ton of, let's say, sun exposure when you were younger. I do believe that the sun exposure that you get when you're younger, when you're a teenager, can rear its ugly head decades potentially later. So basically these are, are deposits of pigment from your body, basically of your skin, uh, that is in response to ultraviolet radiation injury, essentially. So what's the difference between, let's say, an age spot and other types of pigmentation? And how can you tell the difference? Well, I get a lot of people who tell me, Dr. Ian, I've got melasma, and will this cream make my melasma better? Or will doing IPL improve my melasma? Well, melasma is very different. Melasma is pigment that is deeper in the skin. Okay, this is pigment that's uh, in the dermis of the skin, and oftentimes melasma is related to hormone uh, uh, issues. Okay, so a lot of people, they get melasma when they're pregnant. Uh, people, once again, can have triggers for melasma that can uh, basically be hormone related. Uh, and so melasma is something that, because that pigment is deeper in the skin, can be very, very difficult to treat. And usually if you see melasma not as spots, okay, but as more patches. So if your pigment is, let's say, in more patches, especially if it came up when you were pregnant, then there's a good chance that that could be melasma and not necessarily related to sun damage. Well, how about moles? How can you tell the difference between, let's say, an age spot or sunspot and a mole that you may not like? Well, there's no simple way for you necessarily to do that. Obviously seeing a dermatologist is probably the best way to tell, but there are a couple signs that you can see. The first thing is if you've had this spot all your life, then most likely that is not an age spot that is a mole. If it's solitary, okay, if it's kind of by itself, especially if it's in an area where you don't really get a lot of sun, like let's say on your butt, then that's more likely to be a mole and not a spot. Uh, typically, uh, age spots kind of cluster. They cluster in areas that you've had a lot of skin, on your face, on your hands, on your neck, on your chest, on your arms. That's where you'll see it more likely, less likely to see age spots, once again, in areas like the, uh, uh, the butt uh, or you know around your private areas, that's gonna be more likely to be a mole. <clears throat> okay, so let's now talk about how you can treat spots, how you can get rid of them and how you can do it holistically. Well, there unfortunately spots are something that you cannot, that won't go away on their own, okay? You have to actually uh, uh, do something to get rid of them for them to go away. You can't just wait them out, okay? They don't go away on their own. So the first thing that you can do, the simplest thing is to use a cream. Now, if you talk to dermatologists and plastic surgeons and you say, hey, what is the most powerful uh, spot reducing cream available, they'll tell you hydroquinone. Hydroquinone is a substance that has been used both over the counter strength, which is 2%, and prescription strength, which is 4%. And these creams have been used for decades and really are the most powerful ways to reduce unwanted pigment. But the problem with hydroquinone is well, there's a lot of problems with it. The first thing is it's not available in Europe, okay, because there are issues with potential toxicities with reactions to it. 
there is something called ochronosis. Ochronosis is a condition where somebody who has darker skin, typically African patients, if they uh, use hydroquinone, they can get this um, unusual reaction where their skin actually turns darker. Uh, and that has been described many, many times. So you gotta be very careful if you've got really dark skin to use hydroquinone can be potentially uh, harmful to your skin. You can once again get this ochronosis, a darkening of the skin after using it, which is the exact opposite of why you're doing it. Um, second thing is that there is evidence of cancer in laboratory rats who have excessive amounts of hydroquinone placed onto basically their skin. Uh, and that has never, to my knowledge, been replicated in humans. Uh, and so because of that, we don't really know uh, what it does necessarily to humans. It appears to be relatively safe, but once again, does cause cancer in laboratory rats, so that is a concern. Something that I think is more widely known and for sure is that you can get tolerance to hydroquinone. If you're on hydroquinone for long periods of time, six months or longer, a year, two years, even longer than that, your skin can develop tolerance to it and almost in a way like your skin's addicted to it, if you go off of the hydroquinone, you can get rebound hyperpigmentation. So essentially you stop this brightening cream and your skin gets darker and you get patches and stuff like that, which can obviously be very distressing for people. So hydroquinone comes, once again, I mentioned in 2% and 4%, and 2% is over-the-counter strength, and 4% is prescription strength. Prescription strength is still available uh, through, your, through a doctor, so we have it in my office. Uh, a lot of dermatologists have it as well. 2% is over-the-counter strength, and interestingly enough, in one of the COVID relief bills, part of the relief bill was actually taking 2% hydroquinone off of the over-the-counter market here in the United States. So you can no longer get hydroquinone 2% over the counter in the United States. You can only get it as a prescription. Why they put this in a COVID relief bill of all things is beyond me, but they did. So if, you're, if you've got a ton of spots and you're under the care of a dermatologist or plastic surgeon, you could consider using a hydroquinone based cream of 4% prescription. And that's gonna be the most powerful way as far as a topical to get rid of unwanted pigmentation. Well, what if you don't want to use hydroquinone? What if that worries you and you wanted to use something that is definitely not harmful to your skin? Well, there are a number of different ingredients out there that can definitely lighten uh, pigmentation. And unfortunately, none of them are truly on the level of, of eff effectiveness as hydroquinone. And some of them are licorice root extract, which is a very popular one amongst the holistic health professionals because it's so natural, licorice root extract. Uh, niacinamide, niacinamide is a very common ingredient in let's say drugstore brand brightening or lightening creams. And probably my favorite, kojic acid. Kojic acid also uh, an ingredient to help lighten pig hyperpigmentation uh, found in more higher quality uh, brightening creams. Um, so look for these three ingredients. Once again, kojic acid, niacinamide, uh, and uh, licorice root extract. Uh, all of these are good for reducing hyperpigmentation. But you have to keep in mind with these creams is that it takes a long time for you to see results. It could take a minimum of two months to really start, start seeing that lightning get better. But it does work, and I'll tell you, there are some things that you can do to make it work faster. Now, my favorite brightening cream is my Yoon Beauty brightening cream. Uh, I have it upstairs. I probably should have brought it here and I could show it to you. Um, that has kojic acid and licorice root in it. Uh, and so this is a cream that is very safe to use. We have it at my online store, yoonbeauty.com, and I'll put a link uh, in the caption below if you want to check it out. This is a cream that you can use basically, you know, 365 days a year to help suppress that unwanted pigment. Okay, so you're using a, a brightening cream to say, well, geez, I want it to work faster than I want to wait two months or, or longer for it to really see results. What can you do? Well, the first thing you can do is you can exfoliate. Exfoliating your skin can help to remove that upper layer of kind of dead skin cells and expose the underlying layer of healthier skin cells and essentially get your skin turning over more quickly. Now, the reason why this can help with the brightening creams is kind of twofold. First, by exfoliating your skin 
and then applying the brightening cream over it, you're gonna get better penetration of that brightening cream. It's not gonna be kind of held out by your skin surface as much. And the second thing is that by turning over the skin more quickly, you're gonna get rid of that pigment faster because that pigment is in the upper layers of skin. And you actually wanna then slough that skin off with that slough skin comes that unwanted pigment. And so turning the skin over more quickly by regularly exfoliating uh, can cause your brightening creams to work more quickly. Now, if you wanna take that to the next level, then I would recommend two other things you can try. Uh, you can try a retinoid uh, like our Yume Beauty Retinol Moisturizer. That can once again get the skin turning over more quickly and it acts as a very mild skin lightener on its own. And if you want to take that to the next level, then using a vitamin C serum like our CE antioxidant serum every morning can also help to suppress the pigment as well. And it helps to protect your skin from the ultraviolet radiation that can cause those spots to come back. So once again, the basic thing would be to use a good skin brightening cream. You want to add exfoliation on top of that. That can get better penetration. You want to take it to the next level and then you add uh, the CE antioxidant serum like a vitamin C serum and you add a retinoid to it. Uh, and these are uh, products uh, that are in my two minutes, five years younger skincare routine. Uh, and then once again, we have the brightening cream. That's my favorite. And I tell you, most over-the-counter drugstore brand, department store brand skincare products have these products as well. If you don't want mine, that's totally fine. Uh, look for, once again, a brightening cream with those ingredients, add a retinoid to it, uh, add a uh, vitamin C serum to it, and ideally you want to exfoliate, whether with a physical exfoliating, exfoliating agent uh, like a scrub or a chemical exfoliating agent like an alpha hydroxy acid. So that's how you treat hyperpigmentation just by using creams. Now, one other quick tip is if you have access to a med spa, plastic surgeon, or dermatologist's office, and you have some extra income that you can spend, then I would strongly encourage you to consider IPL or BBL treatments. IPL stands for intense pulse light, BBL for broadband light, they're essentially the same thing. Uh, but these are similar to lasers, they're not exactly lasers, but very similar, and they can target that pigment very accurately, zap that pigment, damage it, and cause it to basically slough off, usually within about a week or so. This is really the gold standard for getting rid of unwanted pigment, like age spots, uh, and typically you do necessitate multiple treatments, but it's usually very well tolerated, kind of feels like somebody's snapping a rubber band at your skin at the worst, and it definitely works. Now you do typically need multiple treatments to get rid of all the pigment that you wanna get rid of, uh, but it can really, really help. And the great thing too is if you really are kind of more holistic and natural minded, uh, a device like this, okay, now you're going to a doctor's office, okay, but a device like this has no chemicals to it. Um, you know, you don't need numbing medicine or any of that stuff. It's completely natural because it's literally just light. It's light. You're not exposing your body to chemicals or anything like that. It's just light and it definitely works. And so for those of you who say, look, I'm willing to kind of take, you know, to, to do a bunch of things. And my recommendation would be to combine the skincare recommendations that I just made um, with the IPL treatments. So I hope you enjoyed that uh, kind of summary of how you treat hyperpigmentation. Take a peek at this video right up here where I give you some more tips on how to look younger and get better skin. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.